The Rockefeller Center Christmas tree here in New York is one of the most iconic symbols of Christmas and one of its biggest. But after the lights come down, the giant Norway spruce has a less public second life. Brooke Silva Braga is here with the story. Brooke, good morning. Good morning, guys. The tree, of course, is huge, usually between 70 and 90 feet tall, capped with millions of crystals, covered in thousands of lights. But beneath all that sparkle is a good amount of wood. And after it's taken down each January, it is put to a good use that lasts long beyond the holidays. Each fall, a tree is chopped out of obscurity and escorted with great fanfare to the heart of New York City. Three, two, one. For a month or so, covered in five miles of lights, co-starring in all those selfies, it is Christmas. Big, bright, commercial, temporary. But for the last 12 years, when that season of attention has passed, Tishman Spire, the real estate company running Rockefeller Center, has milled the tree down for boards and brought it to a building site. You know, it's funny, you see that tree is this monster tree, and all the wood that gets out of it comes in a pickup truck. Volunteers from Habitat for Humanity use those boards to help make a home. It's pine, so it's not the strongest wood, but it's wood that we appreciate. I've got grandchildren that can say, you know, see that tree that lit last year? It's in this house. Last year's tree made it here to Newburgh, New York last summer to be drilled into the rafters of an abandoned fixer-upper that would one day belong to Lakeisha Atkins. Did you ever go as a kid to the, see the tree? Yes, my grandmother took me to see the tree. I remember us going through the crowd of people walking to see the Christmas tree get lit. Your grandmother's important to you. Yeah, she's, she raised me from the hospital when nobody didn't want me. She took me. The sturdy home has long been hard for Lakeisha to find. Her grandmother's place was crowded with distant cousins. She says they didn't like her, and some of them abused her. I didn't understand why I was getting treated so bad. I didn't understand why they hated me so much. Yeah, well, I can't imagine anyone would understand that. Can you imagine in sixth grade praying for a kid just to have somebody to love you, but then realizing that you just have to find love with inside yourself. Eventually, Lakeisha also found love with Larry Atkins, an aspiring plumber she met at a party. They married and started raising five kids together. Our plan was I go to school and get my degree. He support me. Then he go to school and get his plumbing. We get a good job and then we get a house. But before that could happen, in 2015, Lakeisha got a terrible phone call. And she was like, Larry got shot. Larry got shot in his head. And he was dead before he hit the ground. But Habitat for Humanity families do not get their homes in exchange for a sad story. Volunteer labor makes the house affordable, but Lakeisha will be on the hook for the mortgage. To qualify, she had to take budgeting classes. All right, I'll shovel with you and put in hundreds of hours of her own work. And this place, I mean, it looks terrible, but it also yeah. looks amazing, like just the space. The potential, yeah. just like me. Growing up, I was an empty show. Nobody saw me for who I had potential to be. They saw me at that moment for what I was. So I see my house for what it's going to be, not for what it is right now. It was June when we first visited that empty shell of a building by last week. It had been transformed, and Lakeisha officially got the keys to her family's future. This is beautiful. Oh my God. This is so nice. Oh my gosh. This is so nice. God doesn't give you what you pray for, God gives you what you need when you need it. So he answered your prayers at his own time. I just would tell that girl that's laying in her bed crying because she's hungry, because she's been traumatized, because she's been abused. Just keep God, trust God. That's the only thing that got me where I'm at in life. Lakeisha says she wants to stay involved with Habitat by helping other families get through the program. It can be a difficult 
lengthy process, but her pitch to other families is if a single mother of five can do it, you can too. Wow, oh, what Lakeisha. an inspirational story and woman she is. Just, I mean, that talking about the house being an empty shell and the potential and yes. that she needed somebody, she was the one that had to see that yeah. in herself. I, Unbelievable. I love the love story of those two people. And so sad that she had to lose them, and yet she has such resilience for yeah. her children. Yeah, it's obviously been really, really hard on that family, but we got to spend a bunch of time with them both this summer and this week. And uh, her and those kids are doing well, and they are so excited to finally move into this house. house. The house, Wonderful. thanks to that tree. Yes! I'll think about that yeah. back to the I'll look at that tree different. Uh, every, yeah. every day I look yes. at it, and I'll see a different story. A lovely, lovely Christmas story. story. Thank yes. you.